So here I have opened my Remix ID. Again, this is the solid version I'm using and which I have explained already in the last video. Make sure to use the 8 or you can go with the 9 one, 8.9. So this is the contract name I have called car licensing and sell. You can give whatever name you want, but this is the motive we have for the entire contract. So this is the first drug we have in that we are keeping the entire information about the car because we have to know whenever someone will list their car for licensing or reselling or selling, we have to identify that what data we have in the car, what specifics but specification we can take so when you will go to the normal showroom when you try to sell your car you have to provide the specification that the house powers the the when the you have bought the car when what is the registration all the paperwork you have to do the same thing we are doing here in this particular variable so we are keeping the information about the owner though so who is the owner of the car then the price then the deposit so if he wants to deposit any fund that's the amount we are keeping and that's what we are taking as a UNT variable. So we have the lease term, lease end, and here we have checking that is lead. So these are the information we are taking. Pretty simple. I hope you guys are already familiar because those of you who are watching, I believe that you guys have a car and you have come across this. Okay. So this is the first piece of the data mapping we have. So we are mapping the entire information about an individual car based on the address because those who will upload, that's the address is the unique address for the user so that's the mapping we have here and here we have this particular unt variable which keep the track of that how many cars are getting listed for resale or for licensing so this will keep the track of that and here we have the events so events are really powerful which will save a lot of money for you for your clients because you have to fetch the data and display in your front end so these things plays a huge role in your smart contract so here we have the constructor in that we are setting this variable car counter to zero because obviously when this contract will deploy there is no car listed in the contract so we have to define the value of this car count so then we have this particular modifier because the reason why we have this modifier in the contract because there are certain function we want to restrict to call by only owner so only owner of the contract will have the authority to call the function not anybody else okay so that's why we have taken this modifier and that's the check we are doing here you can see message dot sender is equal to the car owner means the person who is calling the function his address should match the address of the owner so if both matches then we can execute the function otherwise we have to throw this error message that you are not the owner only the car owner can call this particular function okay so that's the modifier we have so this is the first piece of modifier we have now we have this register car obviously that's a very simple function we have in the contract because user will call this function to register their car for any specific condition for licensing for registration for sales you can define as many rules as you want depending on the service you provide okay so we are taking all of this information we are taking the price deposit and lease time and that's all we are checking here so price must be greater than zero then deposit must be greater than zero and least term must be greater than zero and that's we are throwing this error message once this three condition get fulfilled we have to simply update the entire data so we have simply taking the our struct and we are passing all of this data so here the message dot sender the person who will con the contract it will automatically assign his address then we have the price deposit lease terms and zero and false and then we are simply updating that all data and here we have initializing the event Okay, so far so good. Now close this function. Now let's come back to here. So here we have this lease car and then we have to pass the address of the owner, the car owner. And we are making public and payable because there is a transfer of funds in this particular function. In the last function, you can see that when the user is registering their car, we are not charging, we are not making any fund transaction in that. Obviously you can, if you want to charge certain fund, suppose you have a marketplace, you have a DAV and you want to make money, obviously you will, you want to make money. So whenever someone will list their property, list their car, you want to charge certain commission. So that's what you can include here. So if you really want to charge, you have to make it payable so user can transfer the fund. And here we are taking this, making the reference of the data. And here we have taken this variables car and that's the mapping we have. We are simply updating and it will keep the track of this entire data. So this is the, this is where it is. So here we have that one and then we are checking for certain condition. So the very first check we are doing that only user valid address can call the function, not the contract. So only the address of a personal wallet can call, not the, not the contract address. So I want you to type in the comments that what is the difference between the contract address and the personal, personal address. 
I have explained that in the last video where I have explained you that what is the major difference we have in the personal account, personal wallet address and the contract address. So do let me know in the comment section. I want to see that how many of you can recall that and do let me know in the comment. Then the second check we are doing that is it is it card is for the lease means someone have listed for sale. So that's the second check. Then the third check we are doing for the deposit. So the amount is someone is trying to provide is exactly match the amount which user have pushed put sorry for making the transaction so that's the check we are doing then we are simply updating all of this data and we are updating the times and the dates all of the things and that's pretty simple hope so far so good you guys understand that what we are doing here pretty good now close this one now we have here the buy car function which obviously allow the user to buy their car so again we are making the reference of the car owner and the car then we are checking for this condition so the very first check we are doing that again the same check we are doing that not contract cannot call this function then we are checking that is it listed so if it's not listed then we have to throw this error message but if it's there then we have to go to the next check then we have to check for the price so if we provide the valid price as per the required price then definitely the transaction will happen and the ownership of the car will be transferred to the person who will call the function so that's the one we have close this one now that buy is done now we have this get car so obviously that's a very simple function and no matter what kind of contract you will build you will find these type of functions very frequently repeating over and over again in the contract because you have to ultimately provide the data if someone wants to have a data about a particular individual car they need to know they need to have a function in the contract so we can call it and they can get the information so that's what you can do so you can provide this one so you can see all they have to do is to pass the address of the owner the car owner and it's going to return all of this data so we are making the reference of the particular car then we are simply returning all the data about this car which we have defined here so hope you guys have got an idea that how you have to write the smart contract for the sell when it's come to selling any product here we have talked about the car but you can follow the exact model for any type of business any type of business okay so that's the only thing for my end again i'm going to provide you this entire source code in the discord server so let me come here yesterday i provided you this particular code so many of you guys have given you amazing response and i'm going to provide this source code as well here so i'm going to simply paste here and <coughs> i'm going to make a request <laughs> so here it says that your message is too long not a big deal i will what i will do i'll simply so let me select the half part so i'm going to provide you the code in two parts so uh what i will do i'll simply select come here and select till the way here in the lease car lease car copy that one and that's what i'm going to provide you here and paste here so here we have that and I, now i have to copy the rest half and provide it to you here copy and i'm going to provide you here so you guys can simply copy the entire source code put in the remix id just have a look try to understand that what logic we have included and try to build project on top of that that will give you the real learning and again i'm telling you that we have finally launched this particular huge project this will give you a huge learning if you build this particular application you will understand every single thing about the state management react rurex toolkit and how you have to work with the api how you have to build a real world application where you have to provide all of things like payment donations emails tons of things so i would recommend you to come and watch everything explained extensively this is one of the project we can include into our portfolio and that will give you the extra push in your in your portfolio to show you some in your portfolio so you will become a job ready and if you are not following this particular project which we have on the channel so currently we have covered so many things we have built the api we have built the smart contract we have built the context we have covered so many things so i would recommend to come and follow this project in this you will have a tons of learning you will understand that how you have to build the custom designs so we are not only covering about the blockchain state management api building but we are also learning about the pure css and layer of structure that one is the most important thing one of you have asked me recently that how important it is to know a front end and ui ui ux designing in terms of building dap so i'm going to make an extensive video on that that whenever i build any project why i build from start to end not only the smart contract not only the back end not only the front end why i build the complete app what is the reason behind that so again a video will come on that so you guys can have a proper idea that what are the things you have to learn 
if you really want to become a valuable blockchain developer so that's the only thing i want to talk about in this video hope you guys have a complete idea that how you can build the logic to write a smart contract for any industry okay so if you find this video valuable do let me know in the comment section and if you have any query do let me know in the comment section so i'll try to solve that and that's the only thing from my end for the time being see you in the next video have a wonderful day bye, -bye.